A, a, a big part of the book is an application of the Marine Corps Warfighting Manual as a set of conceptual frameworks for making smart decisions on how to engage stakeholders. Just as with Clausewitz, where I changed the word war to communication and said it was an act of will directed towards a living audience that reacts, and that helps us understand communication, with warfighting you can do the same thing. For 21 years now, one of my clients has been the United States Marine Corps. And I train every Marine Corps colonel and lieutenant colonel, and I've trained most generals on how to deal with negative events in public places. And these days, combat is always public. And one of the things I say to my Marine Corps and other military and to my law enforcement clients is, this is what's going to kill you. you. Talk about mobile, this is what's going to kill you. That everything that they do now has a potential for being recorded and instantly up on Twitter and on Facebook and on other things. And they need to be really, really attentive to this kind of stuff. Having said that, Working with the Marines, I came upon a very, very slim manual, which is the first thing every Marine is required to read. And it's a slim book called Warfighting, also called Marine Corps Doctrinal Publication Number 1. It's the first doctrine of being a Marine. And Warfighting is, first of all, a remarkably well-written book for being a military manual. Anybody ever served in, in the military, you know, manuals can be pretty dry. This is not. The other thing I find is, by simply changing a couple of words, it can be really helpful. So the first paragraph of Warfighting says this. It says, war is fundamentally an interactive social process. Think about that. War isn't about sending missiles on people. It's fundamentally an interactive social process. Change one word. Communication is fundamentally an interactive social process. It's not about sending. It's about being in continuous relationship with someone. It says Warfighting in the second sentence. War is thus, communication is thus a process of continuous mutual adaptation, of give and take, of move and counter move. They then go on to say in the third paragraph, it is critical to keep in mind that the enemy, I say the audience, is not a passive entity to be acted upon, but rather a collection of living, breathing human beings with their own goals, their own concerns, their own needs, their own priorities, their own attention spans, and marketers, even their own level of desire to be in relationship with us. That customers don't always want to be in relationship with us. We shouldn't assume that they do. But sometimes we do so assume. We need to take audiences seriously by understanding that they're not passive entities, but they're living, breathing human beings. Continuing. It's essential that we understand the audience on its own terms. We should not assume that every audience thinks the way we think, decides as we do, or has the same values, goals, or concerns as we do. We don't have time today to talk about Netflix. But I have a whole chapter in the book on how Netflix essentially caused its stock price to fall 75%, lost a million customers because they announced a relatively routine change in service and price increase in the context of pure internal operational detail about the company without any discussion of what it means to the customer, without any discussion of in order to provide you with the highest quality selection, the fastest downloads, the best variety of programs, none of that. They instead spoke to the audience as if the audience cared about the internal operations of Netflix. And oh, by the way, didn't even bother to tell the customers that if you want the same service you have now, it's going to cost you 60% more. Wasn't even in the email. <laughs> Wasn't even in the initial communication. So there's a really good example of an otherwise savvy marketing company that didn't understand that customers actually care about their own stuff, not about the company's stuff. There's a real lesson there. If we had three hours, we'd unbundle Netflix in all of its glory. Says warfighting is translated, we need to see the audience through our audience, we need to see ourselves through our audience's eyes and anticipate what the audience will do so that we may adapt. If only Netflix had asked, what would a customer reasonably expect us to be saying when we change our service, to be saying when we raise our prices? Netflix said none of those things. And then it says, effective communication focuses on the audience's worldview. We need to get inside the audience's thought process and see the audience as it sees itself and make our decisions in light of the audience's anticipated reactions and counteractions. In other words, communication is an act of will directed towards a living entity that reacts. We need to understand the living entity, and we need to understand the reaction.